Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. It is beautiful here in Florida and just having a wonderful time. Love this place, it's starting to heat up. It's June, it's actually the day, the celebration of Pentecost. And Pentecost is not a um, Christian celebration necessarily, it was a Jewish festival and uh, always comes around this time of year, 40 days after Passover. And uh, it's significant, obviously, because of what takes place in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost in Scripture. And uh, what's so cool about the Bible is that it not only is something significant for God going forward, he hasn't abandoned the the festival or the celebration, and he hasn't abandoned what's happened in Scripture prior to. There's there's a mirroring that's going on in Scripture on the day of Pentecost. God, you know, I I, I contacted my kids and my wife this week and telling them, hey, read and reread. Uh, Genesis 1 and 2 and Revelation 21 and 22. And what you see in that, in that comparing and contrasting of what's going on is God's going to re, uh, renew, not make a new, but he's going to go back to what was he originally established, Eden, and all of the earth and all of the heavens overlapping and being an Edenic place, a place where God's presence resides and his people reside with him, with those that don't want to reside with him outside of that space. So anyway, the same thing is other things that took place in Genesis are mirrored again in scripture with the New Testament and with uh, these events that take place. And this is what we celebrate. You know, growing up Pentecostal, Pentecostal was all about, oh, they, you know, on that day, that's when the believers were filled and endued with power, which is true. And they, you know, so that they would be witnesses into all the earth, which is true too. And they speak in other tongues, which is true. But what the significance is going on here is something that mirrors Genesis 11. And at Genesis 11, it's the story of the Tower of Babel. All of the people had gathered in one place. They were, as Acts says, in one accord. They were in one mind, in one thought, to accomplish one goal. And they began to build a uh, we call it a tower, but basically, you know, think of the pyramids. Those are temples to those gods in Egypt. And so um, what a term for it would be like a ziggur ziggurat. And so that's a temple. And so what they were doing was because they built these Nimrod from Genesis had built these cities, Babylon and Assyria. He built these cities. He was an evil guy. And uh, and so. He, he built them, and so now they're in, in one accord, in one thought, in one mind, and they're building a temple to summon gods to, at their will, they're doing it for a name for themselves. They're doing it in their own name. See, there's something about um, sacred spaces, and there's something about uh, names. Those are very important. I was sharing this the other day in a video about, you know, when people will make this reference, you know, God, whoever that is to you, as if the name doesn't mean anything and the name means everything. You better name the God you're speaking to. And uh, why would I go to the lesser gods of the, of the world and the earth when I can go to the God who created them? And so Yahweh, that God, and so God comes down. He says, "Let's go down and see what's going on." And he, they, he recognizes with, with all of his spiritual um, counsel and all of the the host of heaven, and they see, wow, they're they're going to accomplish what they want. They're going to they're going to build a temple and try to 
get us to come there. And he said, you can't do it because they're doing it in their own name and their own authority. They're once again making themselves God or they're following another God. And so God, you know, touches them and scatters them. In Genesis 10, it's actually a reverse there. It gives all the nations that he scatters them into. He's, they, they, they migrate into language that they can understand. And so it, he named 70 nations, a very important number. And I've talked about this before. And so he names these nations. And so, you know, they spread out and start um, creating their own cities you know, according to their own languages. We tend to do that, you know, we migrate to our own kind, you know, whether, whatever we can do that. And so it's very unique. So here's this festival going on. Here's these people groups now that have been scattered around the earth and they're migrated back into Jerusalem because um, for the festivals. So it's unique. It wasn't that they weren't, they were obviously Jewish, but they'd live, they live in foreign countries and they're living there or residing there at that moment for this season. Because, you know, if they would have traveled from uh, their land to come there for the Passover, then they would have stayed the 40 days to be there for Pentecost since they're so close together because they, they, they weren't flying in planes, they weren't driving in cars, they you know, took a while to get back and forth. And so they would have just turned around and come right back if they had to do that. And so they're residing there. And so here's Acts, the first and second chapter, this miraculous thing takes place that now, you know, let me go back, Tower of Babel, they're in one accord, one mind, one heart to accomplish something in their own names. They get scattered. Day of Pentecost, the Bible says they're in one accord, one mind to praise his name, Yahweh, what he has done. And so God's told them, go there and pray. And so they're doing this focused prayer. And then the spirit of God comes, the promised spirit from the book of John where God says, I'm, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm sending the Holy Spirit to come to guide you into all truth and empower you to be my witnesses into all the earth. And so when these, as what they see and what they feel and what they hear and what they experience as tongues of fire come on each one of them, you know, God shows up in fire and wind all the time throughout scripture. So they hear this mighty rushing wind. It seems that the fire is individually and they begin to praise God in languages that they had not learned. But the people outside who have gathered from all these nations hear them in their own, not only their own language, but in their own dialects. So think about that in, in English. We have different dialects, slangs. You know, if you go from the South to the Midwest, to the North, you know, out to the West Coast, we use different words, different ways. And, or if you go to, you know, Europe and the English speaking, the UK, you know, they use words in different ways or from Irish and Scott, we're all speaking English. We just say words differently with a different dialect, with a different sound, with a different pronunciation. Go to Australia, we're all speaking English, but it's different. So all of these people not only are hearing it in their own native tongue, they're hearing it in their specific dialect and they're freaking out because like, wow, aren't these people all from here? Because we can tell they're not from our country, but they're praising the name of God in each one of these countries. So all in one accord. Now the language, their, their speech is scattered so that the people that had been scattered at Babel can all hear in their individual languages. <laughs> I mean, when you stop and think about it, you're like, dude, God, you are so <laughs> awesome. That's why when Peter and James and John and Paul later go to these nations to, 
to witness, he finds believers already. They're finding, I say he, they're finding believers in these cities because they heard the praises and 3,000 of them come to faith in Christ Jesus on that day. So they go back home after Pentecost and they begin to tell other people. It's amazing. God will spread his word any way he wishes. And so you have this mirror of in one accord to praise themselves, God scatters them in one accord to praise God. God scatters their language. So all these people that have been scattered can hear the gospel in one instant. Amazing, amazing. God is so good. He's never gonna leave us as the word says, nor forsake us. But he's always going to attempt to speak to our hearts if we'll just do simple things. The kingdom's simple. Love God with all of our heart, soul, and strength. And love one another as we would love ourselves. That's it. You don't have to witness. You don't have to learn how to lead people to Christ. You have to learn how to love people. And when you do that, they'll want what you have. They'll desire to know the God that you know. That's what we're called to be, imagers of God. And Jesus was the perfect image of God. So we just follow what he did. He loved people. And he did good. And so I love you. Bless you this day. I hope that encourages you as, as this celebration Sunday of Pentecost. That God had everything in mind from the beginning all the way through the end. And so bless you with health and healing and wisdom and knowledge and power and prosperity and the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit of God to be evident and flowing in your life. Have a great day.